we're just 10 seconds away from resuming the countdown, looking for an on-time launch of the 61B mission at 729. And we're at T-minus 9 minutes and counting. The ground launch sequencer program has been initiated. And the solid rocket booster flight instrumentation recorders have been turned on. T-minus 8 minutes, 44 seconds and counting. Mission Control in Houston has turned on the auxiliary data system. Coming up on the eight minute point in the countdown. T minus eight minutes and counting. The orbiter test conductor has requested that Houston send the stored program commands, which is the final update on antenna management based on the liftoff time, and it sets the system which makes the orbiter compatible with downrange tracking stations. The orbiter uh, AC electrical bus sensors have been placed on monitor by pilot Brian O'Connor. T minus seven minutes, 25 seconds, and we've had a go for retract of the orbiter crew access arm. This is the walkway which is used by the crew uh, to go from the fixed service structure to the vehicle. That arm can be put back in place in about 15 or 20 seconds if an emergency arises. Coming up on the seven minute point in the countdown, T minus seven minutes and counting. Very quiet count as uh, everything goes very, very smoothly during the entire countdown for this evening's launch. T-minus 6 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The orbiter test conductor has given pilot O'Connor a go to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start. Uh, he'll configure switches in the cockpit to put the auxiliary power unit or APUs in the ready to start configuration. T minus six minutes and counting. OTC, PLT, APU pre-start complete, three grades. Copy. The auxiliary power units will be started uh, a little less than one minute from now at the T minus five minute point. Transmit DSM-1500. All right, your copy, 1500. Mark. T-minus 5 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting, and Mission Control has transmitted the signal to start the onboard flight controller, uh, recorders. The two recorders collect measurements of shuttle system performance and are played back for evaluation after the mission. Ten seconds away from T minus five. T minus five minutes and PLT counting. And we have a go for APU start. Uh, LOX replenish has been terminated and liquid oxygen drain back has been initiated. Uh, pilot Brian O'Connor now flipping the three switches in the cockpit to start each of the three auxiliary power units. The auxiliary power units have been activated. T minus four minutes, 25 seconds and counting. And the solid rocket boosters and external tank safe and arm devices have been armed. An inhibit will remain on the safety devices until T minus 10 seconds. T 
T-minus four minutes and counting. The flight crew has been reminded to close the airtight visors on their launch and entry helmets. The final purge sequence of the main engines is underway. T-minus three minutes, 40 seconds, and the orbiter aerospace, uh, aerosurface test has started. The orbiter flight control surfaces are moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify that they're ready for launch. T-minus three minutes, uh, 22 seconds and counting. And now the three main engines are being moved through their pattern to ensure that they're ready for steering the orbiter as it races up through the atmosphere. Engine gimbal checks are now complete and they are placed in the start position. T minus three minutes and counting. ELT, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. The external tank liquid oxygen pressurization has started and purging of the shuttle main engines is terminated. T-minus 2 minutes, 35 seconds and counting. Retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood uh, has started. And the ground launch sequencer will make a final check to make sure that that's fully retracted at T-minus 37 seconds. Coming up on the T-minus 2-minute point, the fuel cell ground supplies have been terminated, and Atlantis is now running on its onboard fuel cell reactant. The liquid oxygen ullage pressure tests are underway, and the liquid oxygen tank is approaching flight pressure. T-minus 1 minute, 50 seconds, and counting, and liquid hydrogen uh, pressurization is underway. We're less than two minutes now away from the liftoff of 61B and its seven crew members. At the T minus one minute point, ground launch sequencers will verify that the shuttle main engines are ready to start. T minus one minute, 25 seconds and counting. T-minus one minute and 10 seconds and counting, the liquid hydrogen tank now at flight pressure. T-minus one minute and counting, the sound suppression water system is now armed and pre-liftoff water will be released at the T-minus 16 second point. T-minus 45 seconds and counting, the solid rocket booster flight instrumentation recorders are on. T minus 35 seconds and counting. The orbiter computers have uh, positioned the vent doors. Okay, and we have start. a goal for auto sequence start. Challenger's four redundant computers have assumed primary control. And T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, Ten. Nine, uh, 8, we have a go for main engine start. We have main engine start, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff, liftoff of the space shuttle, and it has cleared the tower. Altitude 
5.8 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 4 nautical miles. Engine throttling back up to 104%. Throttle up, Atlantis. Ground clear, 468 max EAS. Velocity 3,000 feet per second, altitude 10 nautical miles, downrange distance 8 nautical miles. Three good APUs running at normal speed, three good fuel cells, three engines at 104%. seconds away from solid rocket booster separation. Velocity 5,000 feet per second, altitude 19 nautical miles, downrange distance 20 nautical miles. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Roger. And we have solid rocket booster separation. Two minutes, six seconds. Shuttle three-man engines running at 104%. Velocity 5,700 feet per second, altitude 27 nautical miles, downrange distance 36 nautical miles. Performance is nominal. Atlantis Houston, performance nominal. Roger, nominal performance, nice smooth ride, Fred. Roger. Standing by for two engine transatlantic capability to Dakar, should that become necessary. Atlantis capable of reaching a transatlantic abort if necessary. Two engine tower capability. Roger, two engine tower. Velocity 6,500 feet per second, altitude 38 nautical miles, downrange distance 67 nautical miles. Fifteen seconds. Velocity seven thousand feet per second. Return status and mission control. Flight director Gary Cohen taking a poll of the flight uh, controllers. All positions indicating a go. Velocity seventy four hundred feet per second. Three minutes thirty five seconds. Uh, standing by for two engine tail capability to Maroon at one hundred nine percent throttles. Three engines running at one hundred four percent. Velocity 8,000 feet per second. Standing by for negative return. Atlantis Houston, negative return. Roger, negative return. Atlantis uh, no longer capable of returning to the launch site uh, in the event of an abort. Four minutes, 10 seconds. Atlantis capable of reaching a transatlantic abort uh, into Maroon on uh, two engines at 104% if that were to become necessary. Velocity 9,000 feet per second, altitude 51 nautical miles, downrange distance 152 nautical miles. Tire shuttle vehicle weight at liftoff about four and a half million pounds, and by the time Atlantis reaches orbit, uh, it will have shed uh, four and a quarter million pounds. Four minutes, 55 seconds. Velocity, 10,400 feet per second. Altitude, 54 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 204 nautical miles. Atlantis, Houston, press to ATO. Roger, press to ATO. Atlantis capable of reaching a, uh, an abort to orbit on two engines if that were to become necessary. Velocity, 11,300 feet per second. Altitude, 55 nautical miles. Atlantis Houston, press to Miko. Roger, press to Miko. Atlantis uh, capable of reaching a main engine cutoff on two engines. Three engines running at 104%. All systems look good at this time. Velocity 12,300 feet per second. Downrange distance 270 nautical miles. Altitude 56 nautical miles. Guidance officer reports navigation in excellent shape and main engine cutoff projected at 8 minutes 31 seconds. Atlantis Houston, single engine tower capability. Roger, single engine tower. 
Atlantis now capable of reaching a transatlantic abort uh, if that were necessary on only one engine. Three engines continuing to run 104%. Six minutes, 10 seconds. Velocity 14,200 feet per second. seconds. Velocity 15,500 feet per second. Altitude 56 nautical miles. Downrange distance 389 nautical miles. Three engines performing nominally. Three good APUs and three good fuel cells. Atlantis Houston, single engine press to Miko. Roger, single engine press. Seven minutes, 15 seconds. Atlantis capable of reaching a main engine cutoff on only one engine. We have three engines operating normally at 104%. Velocity 19,000 feet per second, altitude.